Hey, before we get started with the episode, I want to let you know that we've teamed up again with our friends at Official League, who makes officially licensed Dortmund hats. And to celebrate Dortmund making it in, uh, in the Champions League final and having a great Champions League season, uh, we've teamed up with them to do a hat giveaway. We've done this before, and we've got a couple more for you. And you can get entered by joining our Discord. I talk about it a lot. We're building a really co cool community over on our Discord. So if you haven't joined, or if you're already in our Discord, uh, you have a chance to win one of these caps. So if you want to join, make sure you find the link, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on podcasts, you can get the link in the description of this episode. And then in Discord, there will be a specific giveaway uh, channel or chat. Uh, so make sure you click into that and you'll get all the details about how you can be entered to win. Again, uh, you can win an official league Dortmund hat by joining our Discord. My name's Jacob, joined as always by Carver. How's it going, man? How are you doing? Doing pretty good for the most part. I want to be as hyped as possible for the Champions League, but my support for Dortmund has left me feeling a bit gross lately, to be honest. <laughs> it sucks having this feeling towards my club ever at all, let alone the week of the Champions League final, but I just can't help but feel and express my sense of disgust and discomfort with some <laughs> of the club's actions in the past year. Um, but I'll, I'll get to that here in a minute. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm like, I'm excited. Champions League final... Obviously, the build up to it is, I don't know, it's just, it's kind of crazy. I still feel like it's not the Champions League final. I don't know if it's going to set in maybe when the match starts. Like, I know there has been a lot of hype and build up, but I'm still, it just doesn't feel like it yet to me. I don't know why. Uh, but right. definitely excited when I watch the videos and see everything online. But part of it, it just feels like it's just a, another game. And maybe that's, maybe that's for the best. I don't know. I also uh, do want to apologize. Uh, my audio might not be, uh, at the normal quality it is, uh, I kind of had a m microphone mishap before recording tonight, so I'm just talking straight into the laptop. So hopefully it doesn't sound too dreadful. Um, also apologizing for, I know it's been a bit since we've done an episode last week um, to recap the Bundesliga season or, or talk about that final match in the Bundesliga season. Uh, we were or we joined the Dortmund Dispatch podcast, which is um, Brian, who we've had multiple times on our show and a few other guys. It was, it's always cool doing like a cool mega podcast episode. So um, that's where we were last week. Uh, hopefully you were able to listen to that. Um, and if not, sorry for the delay, but we're back now. Want to do a preview episode for the Champions League final, Real Madrid. Carver, I know we, we did talk with the Dortmund Dispatch guys, but I want to go back to that final uh, Marco Royce Bundesliga game just briefly. I mean... Uh, people can go back and listen to that episode if they haven't already. But, it's, yeah, I, I don't know. If you have, like, quick thoughts from that and that kind of the the Marco Royce send-off, if you want to do a quick recap. Yeah, it was just the perfect day, right? It felt surreal. It's It feels not as real, I guess, it just as how I'm feeling right now towards the Champions League final. I mean, even though it's a few days away, it just still doesn't feel real. And it's the same way with Marco Royce's last game. I feel like even though everything we saw with him for before, during, and after the game, you're still thinking this man's going to be back next year. There's still some sort of hope for whatever reason. But um, sadly, that's not the case. But man, he had a, just the perfect day. I mean, anywhere from if, if anyone saw the vlog from the channel that had him just at the stadium early in the morning that uh, that day and just kind of hanging out with the media crew, he set up the the plan to have everyone in the stadium have free beers. I think he bought for like over 80,000 people. I don't know how many people got drunk that night. Um, I could only imagine the party, but of course, just, you know, the standing ovation he had and the TIFO he had. He got a goal, of course, off a free kick, which is a great strike. Uh, it was just a, a perfect day all around. Of course, you get a win too. He went up and talked to the fans afterwards. It was a very intimate moment. It wasn't, you know, really broadcasted for the whole world. That's what made it feel, even though I couldn't understand or hear what he was saying at the time, it was cool to just kind of witness that intimate moment with just the ultras and just, you know, have that moment of player and supporter uh, and that just that relationship that's been built for so long now. And you to see him finally really come full circle and address that just a, a beautiful day. Yeah. I mean, match specifics. I mean, the goal, the free kick goal, you, you said it perfectly. It was just perfect. Like the perfect send off in the sporting sense. And then, yeah, to see him get, I mean, it wasn't just, I love that it was getting in into the stands. Um, it, was, it was very intimate. It wasn't just like acknowledging the fans, but getting in there. And I love like, 
the chill nature of the fans too. It wasn't like this mass crowding, mass storming. They were just like, yeah, one of us. It was like the most one of us experiences I think you, you could ever witness. It was so cool. Like the guys are just, he's standing right next to the guys who are just leading the chants and drumming and they're just chilling. Like, like it wasn't Marco Royce. I don't know how they played it. So cool. Um, yeah, it, it was, uh, kind of a, a perfect day, perfect way to end it. And I did, I mentioned this in the Dortmund dispatch podcast, but I do again, want to shout out, uh, BB Cincy. And, uh, I was able to last minute link up with them and, uh, me and another guy from St. Louis to meet up at a pub, um, which was a really cool experience to one. Like this is a guy who I just met on Twitter, like the day before, um, and for us to link up and kind of have that, we have that Dortmund bond, that Dortmund connection, even if we didn't know each other. And I had a really great time, like talking with him throughout the match. Uh, so shout out to them. If you're in like the Cincy area, I know they did. We, I think we retweeted it, but, um, they will be having a watch party for the Champions League final at a place called the pitch. If you're in the area. And then of course there's watch parties for the Champions League all over the place, Atlanta, DC. Um, I know we've been having a lot of conversations in our Discord. I think a, a couple of guys from Nashville are meeting up for that. So uh, we'll be posting and sharing the uh, kind of the watch party locations as we see them. Uh, KC guys will be having them. St. Louis, obviously. Um, and there, I also put a link, um, and I'll just use this to plug our Discord too. I put a link for, I think Dortmund put out an official, like find a watch party in your area. Um, and if you, if you want to join our Discord, if you want to learn more, um, if you want to find a watch party, make sure you connect with our discord you can find the link to join that in the description of this episode but yeah that was a really cool experience shout out to bvb sensi um and hopefully there's a lot more experiences like that this weekend as we get ready for a uh, champions league yeah um and i mean should we just get into it get into previewing the madrid match uh, I, I do want to address some of these concerns oh yeah I yeah have. sorry sorry <laughs> I, I completely yeah we're gonna start here so no you're good i i, I this is going to be tough and I, you know, it's nothing fun, but just, I have to express my feelings and just uh, discomfort for just the actions that the club has taken for the past year, going back to the signing of Felix Mecha and the club now more recently, essentially signing on to a sports washing partnership between Dortmund and Ryan Metal, a literal war profiteering arms dealer. And at top of all that, now you're seeing rumors floating around for the potential acquisition of Mason Greenwood. Now the sources for Greenwood rumors, and those rumors just basically boil down to Kale denying to comment on the matter. But the fact that he denied to comment rather than just flat out denying that because, or just even the possibility of that, uh, it just speaks to the club continuously and directly contradicting its own core values for some time now. And it just, it just makes me feel gross anywhere from, and I'm quoting directly from the code of conduct here, rejecting bribes to upholding human rights and combating com corruption. You know, the contradiction of these values are seeming to become a trend for this club. And just it's something I don't want my club, myself, or this show to be associated with in any way. I understand this is capitalism. I'm not naive to that fact. Um, and this is not also the first shocking mistake that the club has made for something like this uh, either. I also know I'm going to have to dig the show out of this weird dark hole from the jump now. But these concerns are just bigger than football. And I just thought it was a, very necessary to address them. Uh, you know, I, I want to stay consistent for, you know, you know, just what I believe in uh, and, and just, again, upholding to the club's own standards. It's not just my personal opinion on the matter either, right? This is just directly from the club's code of core values that have been signed on for years now. And the uh, the direct contradictions, again, are just, have just been a really real concern for me. And... I think there, I don't know if it was a reply to one of our tweets or in, in Discord or, or something. Uh, there, someone kind of stated like, oh, this is this this state of football. This is uh, like you got the oil money, you got Premier League, you got, I mean, it's mainly all oil, oil money. Um, and in those states owning um, Saudi states are uh, going to get all the countries wrong. Uh, but, you know, the, this big oil money, all these coming in and, and washing the sport. Um and I get that. Like, I, I get it's 2024 and that stuff has been happening and it, it continues to happen. And these big corporations and big co companies are taking over. But I think that's it's something that's been a lot of people have seen a, or have an appreciation for for the Bundesliga. Like Bundesliga has just always been run a bit differently. Um, 
and it, it's maybe it's not to the same scale, but it is still in, as you stated, like if you, if you put Bundesliga aside, like you just read the core values, right? Like that's, that, that should be it. So that's where it's really like, ah, it's just, it's just a bit, it's more than a bit icky, but <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's not ideal. And it doesn't feel great when it, if maybe Dortmund's a club, like maybe those values, like it's something why a lot of fans have gotten uh, drawn into Dortmund and like what they stand for more than just being a soccer club, but right. these values that, that they have. Yeah. Yeah. And I know there's a lot more people like that too. So that's where it really starts to turn and, and things don't feel good. Um, yeah. And then the, the Greenwood stuff too, like we <laughs> gone on and on about Mecha and Greenwood is like to a whole nother level of terrible things. Right. Uh, I know for God's sake, we had Nico Schultz on this team a calendar year ago too. Right. And again, it's it's not like these things just started happening in the last year. These these date back, and and I just think they're not really trying to hide it as well as they did, um, and, and directly again contradicting these core values that have been signed on to uh, by you know just the club and the supporters acknowledge all of this too. Uh, it's just it's disappointing that the fan base, the just from the club top down, it is not all on the same page for these things that seem very fundamental, very basic. These aren't. You know, again, I get it's a mega corporation and, and you could say there's nuances, but I don't think it's that difficult to stand against the things that we've seen this club time and time again go for for the past year and, and even dating back further. Yeah. And on the, the Greenwood and Schultz comparison, like because of the Schultz and him, like basically being shown the door, like why, why would they even right. come close? Like you said, like why didn't Kale, like the fact that Kale had no comment and not like there should have been a comedy immediately. Like, no, like that's not going to happen because look, Schultz, right? Like that right. should be the example. So why is it even a no comment? I don't know. But hopefully in that, in that case, I know the, uh, the sponsorship one is a little different, but in the Greenwood situation, hopefully that's nothing comes of that. And I hope for the better and not because like, oh, the deal fell through or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and we and we can move on now. But I just I just want I think that is absolutely necessary to address those sort of things. I don't think they should be swept under the rug, and um, and, and and anyone should try to rationalize that sort of thing. I mean, the quote from Vatska I thought was equally disgusting as much as just the deal itself. I mean, this whole all this bullshit about like protecting democracy, quote unquote, and all this stuff. I I just thought it was gross. Uh, well, do you want to talk about Real Madrid now? Gross yeah. club, another gross club. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, what a day! It's again, it just still doesn't feel real here. And Madrid are the literal royalty of this sort of competition in the Champions League final. They've won. Uh, God, now I'm forgetting the stat. I think they've won every final they've been in in the past, like I don't know how many decade or even decade plus now. Uh, so, I, but I don't have to explain that for anyone to know how just how good they are in this competition. But on the flip side of that, Dortmund outside of domestic form have been almost equal in terms of their international form this year in champions league. They've really shown that they can step up in big moments against oppositions that are stacked with quality. I mean, from the likes of PSG Atletico, I mean, you go back to the group stage as well. I mean, a lot of people were thinking we were going to be finishing last or even maybe just, you know, not get out of the group and we've continuously proven people wrong. So it, it's going to be a, it's a cracker of a game. I'm expecting a few goals here, even though we have been very rock solid in the Champions League. I'm, I'm imagining we maybe concede one. I don't, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to happen. I'm, I'm imagining we'll shoot ourselves in the foot, but I'm hoping that's not the case. But I think we can have some perseverance to go on and still win here. But um, either way, I think there's going to be some scoring on either end. And uh, I'll get more into the tactics and everything in a minute, but I just want to get your initial thoughts too. Yeah, it, I mean, it's for me, like thinking of preview in this match. I mean, just my only thought is like, ah, it's freaking Real Madrid. Like what? <laughs> what else? Like, I just like we just have to come in. I mean, do what we've been doing in the Champions League, um, which is I and to that, to, I, I will never claim to be like a super tactician or anything. I don't know how to break down a game necessarily. Yeah. Uh, I can look at stats, but as far as like tactics and how we're going to. I, I can give you a lineup, but when it, when I say we need to do what we've done in the Champions League, all I mean by that is like we got to freaking show up, and we 
we've talked about it a lot this season, like playing with kind of that chip on our shoulder or like when we're the underdogs. And I think we were lucky to be in that position again. Obviously, like the dynamics of this uh, is for us in that sense, I think. And and that's what I'm excited about. Like, yeah. And, and it's like if we show up and play with the heart and the desire and we do it for freaking Marco Royce, then I think we have a chance uh, even when maybe – maybe everything is stacked against us. Maybe like not, I don't know if anyone really gives us a chance in maybe that sense. Um, but, it, and maybe my st- stupid confidence come fr- comes from me just being a Dortmund fan and wanting to see the best uh, outcome possible. But I, I think we have a legit shot. I, I like, I, I feel undervalued and underrated, not me personally, but Dortmund from like real Madrid. Like, I think they're going to come in, being who they are for every reason, like they have every reason to think this, that they are Real Madrid and they win. And I know like, you know, that's how they approach stuff anyways, but this one in particular coming up against Dortmund and even like the Jude Bellingham would probably feel like they have more of an edge with the Jude Bellingham, uh, with having Jude Bellingham in there. And, but I, I honestly don't know, like for us to get a result, I don't know if it's going to be a high scoring result. Like I don't see kind of like what happened with Atletico Madrid. I almost see it, kind of trudging out slugfest in in the not scoring sense and maybe us nicking a 1-0 win. I know that's not what anyone wants to see, but that's how I see us getting a win is kind of like that. defending off out of our asses and and nicking a goal, kind of like that last PSG match. Yeah, I, I, I'm picturing more of like a 2-1 situation, but either way, I, I'm the same way as you. I said there was going to be some goals, but I don't think it's going to be, you know, uh, you know 4-2, anything like that, like against Atletico, like you mentioned. And and I also wanted to just emphasize the point that you made too, which I think was a great point of, of Dortmund. If, you know, when we are the underdogs, when we don't have the weight on our shoulders, we're the ones that actually more more likely to overperform. When we have the titles and and you know these games in hand, where we just simply have to just do our part, that's when we've been falling short in recent years. So I think this is thankfully going to be in our favor for this sort of uh, occasion. And tactically, you're looking at Ancelotti. He's famous for his 4-3-3, but it, this, his Madrid side can be pretty adaptable in their shape, especially with the addition of Jude Bellingham, as you mentioned this season. From the small sample size I've watched from Madrid this year, Jude has taken on a few different roles. He's played primarily as a number 10, even as a second striker with Vinicius as like a 4-2-3-1 or 4-2-4 at times in buildup. And Madrid just, you know, they have a very strong midfield, again, with that 4-3-3 of theirs. Uh, but like any team, there is space to be exploited. In this case, I think with Madrid, it could be find that space out wide, which is favorable for us, given how Sancho obviously thrives in 1v1 situations. Eddie Yemi, Malin, JBG all have pace and skill to use. Uh, for those who haven't heard, Madrid are actually also going to have Schwamini absent for the game, which is a huge blow for their midfield. I mean, as they operate through him, as him being primarily that single pivot. Who'd you say? Chuamini? I think it's Schwamani. I mean, I've, I've, I've heard different ways, but either way, just I throw, imagine... just want to throw both pronunciations out yeah, there just yeah, for yeah. anyone who might be, who, who might be debating it themselves. I don't know. Yeah. Bigger net, bigger net. For, I got you. Chuamini. I don't know. <laughs> I imagine Cruz will take on that role of the single pivot. Now that Schwamani is going to be absent with Kamavinga slotting into that midfield. And that, that's probably going to be my best guess. Uh, both Jude and Vinicius are known to drop deep to receive the ball in order to quickly like advance and play and progress up the field. So, and, and of course I don't have to get into just how dangerous Jude is in those positions when he drops deep, grabs the ball and just drives forward with it. That's exactly what Dortmund have been missing this entire year so far. So that's huge for them. And it's of course, it's going to be really tough for us to stay very tight to him, stay very focused. And of course, very organized as a unit as well to order in order to prevent those moments. And of course, out of possession too, um, Enchilati values aggression and, and intense man-to-man marking, which again is something that we've been struggling with this year. Uh, gets a number of oppositions of different qualities. So I imagine the game is going to be heavily controlled by Madrid. So we're going to be likely attacking on the counter attack. Uh, they do have moments of setting up as like a mid block, but that first line of pressure is usually always pushing forward to keep opposition's pin back. So again, another fault of ours is and a just shortcoming of ours this year has just been our build-up play. And that's going to be on full display for the world to see and hopefully us not exposed too much. But uh, that'll be another massive test for our back line to try to progress fi- the, the ball at the field. And, you know, if, 
if it's got to be one more game of Coble hoofing it forward for full crew to get that lucky touch on the whatever winger that, that I don't that might just be so be it for, at that point. Uh, but, you know, unlike Atletico or PSG, even at certain spells in those two legs, Madrid is going to be pressing. They're going to, I, I would imagine they're not going to let us play out of the back like Atletico or PSG. And it's going to be a much more intense game. Um, so a lot of the, again, a lot of our shortcomings as a team is, is going to be against you know, this Madrid side who can pick apart those um, those weaknesses, but hopefully we could just, again, stick to our strengths. I know we had a test match against, I think it was like the U21s or something like that, uh, either today or earlier sometime this week. I, I forgot to check. But hopefully we could test out some of those ideas from the things that we mentioned and, and have a contingency plan and, and some counters ready to go. Because, again, there are some weaknesses that we can point out for Madrid as well. And, and like I mentioned, too, the space is out wide. They don't have the best fullbacks. I mean, Lucas Vasquez has been pretty poor for them this season. And I imagine he'll be starting, if not Carvajal. But I think Adeyemi could have a hell of a time on that left-hand side for that sort of thing. I mean, of course, if that's not working out, you can later throw in the game. JBG Malin has been, thankfully, he got a good goal against um, Darmstadt at the end of the season. So hopefully he's got a little bit more confidence in him. But yeah, I mean, either way, it's uh, it's going to be a cracker of a game. Yeah, I want to get your thoughts specifically on like Vinicius Jr. and Rearson. Um, I'm personally very excited for this matchup. Like, I I think when we talk about like underdog in, in that fight, like that is Rearson, and he he seems to take those moments and like you, he uses those moments especially to push and to prove how good of a player he is. And I think he thrives in that role. Um, so like. Yeah, I, I, like I'm just really excited. I think it's going to be a, a fun battle, and I, I have no doubt in my mind that Rearson will put on a, like a good show in that, down that that left, left hand or, or right hand side. Yeah, and thankfully in the second leg against PSG, you saw Rearson have a little bit more of that test. I mean, the first leg against PSG, Mbappe ran central. He played more of that out and out number nine, uh, and of course was completely shut out and pocketed from Hummels and Schlotterbeck. And in the second reverse fixture, you have him going out wide a bit more. They brought on a number nine so Mbappe can go ISO on the wings. And Rearson really held his own again. I mean, to get two clean sheets against this PSG side with just an unlimited cash flow, an overwhelming amount of quality in their front line is no easy task. It's, and I mentioned it before, it's a Herculean task actually. But I think if, if Rearson can hold Mbappe, which is crazy to even come out of my mouth, you know, I'm not saying it's a guarantee by any means, but I think he absolutely can be up for the challenge of of holding Rearson or Rearson holding Vinicius uh, and just keeping him quiet. But it's 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 a team game, though. I mean, it's it's not just going to be individually with him. I'm hoping that we're going to have some good cover in the midfield. Sabitzer has been on fire lately uh, with the, just his work rate tracking back, but also really getting forward. I'm hoping Chan is going to be on his game both defensively and the ball and on the ball. I mean, I think that's going to be absolutely vital on both sides of the ball for Dortmund. Um, so, we'll, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, Vinicius also, again, he drops a bit deeper, like I said, with Jude. So we'll have to have some help in midfield to, you know, stop those progressions as well. Um, yeah, I was going to ask about Chan too, because I think the, the Chan-Billingham fight in the middle could be really interesting. And almost from the perspective of, like, I'm going to kind of say what I said with Rearson, like, like I – I think Chan will will try to be like extremely physical. Like he's not he's not going to want Bellingham to show him up or do anything, right? So I think he's going to like get in early and get real physical against him. I think that could be an interesting battle. And I think part of me, and this is just me, I'm going to be I'm super optimistic with all my takes, right? But I think Chan can kind of do a, have a nice role to stop him and shut him down and almost frustrate Bellingham a bit just with that like. It more of like less about skills, but more about being physical and kind of getting in his head and like that that internal like we used to be teammates battle. Um, I don't know. I I hope Chan doesn't prove me wrong, but I I think I think that's it. there's going to be a, a lot more mind games in this. Right. Less 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 just on the pitch, but a lot of mind games behind that matchup in particular. Because you know Chan as the captain is definitely going to want to lead and, and shut him down specifically. Yeah. Only caveat I would say is everything you said, I think could be thrown right back at Chan from Bellingham, right? I mean, his physicality, yeah. Jude is much more physical than people give him credit for. He's really getting stuck in on his challenges, even on the ball too. He's not afraid of 
having any sort of pressure or physicality on him. He's great at the mind games. He loves getting in opposition's heads. So as much as I want Chan to do everything that you said, absolutely. I also want him to have that Zen about him that we saw last spring. And hopefully he can keep calm, not give away any stupid fouls that we've seen for so many years now at Dortmund. And he could just keep it simple, do his job and, um, uh, you know, just help out the midfield where he can. We, he's got a great player like Sabitzer to help him out in a lot of those areas as well. So it takes a lot of communication. And again, it's a team effort. Yeah, that's why uh, I said the optimistic, the optimistic approach. Obviously, Bellingham can, uh, yeah, can can dish it right back. And, and that could be a, a feat in itself, uh, just the mind games behind it. Um, do you want to get into lineup prediction? I think it's pretty straightforward. All uh, I'm just going to start with mine because – Feel like I have it locked down, and before I've just been helter skelter trying to throw out a yeah, lineup. But I'm I'll looking let you know if I have any different takes, but <laughs> I'm I think looking we're at it. So I, yeah, I think I'm good. Uh, and I mean, we can talk kind of tactics too, like where we see see guys. Well, there's one in particular where I think we might see some movement. Um, Kobel and goal, obviously. Because um, okay, well, first I should check. Like I haven't seen any injuries. The last I saw, Benzabayini. Durnville of course, and yeah. Murray were the only yeah. ones who were unavailable. Everyone else fit that's and ready. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> sure. Just that's the last I saw. Hopefully everything that's all correct. Um Kobel and Goal, obviously. Matt's in left back. Schlaughterbeck, Hummels, center backs, Rearson on the right, as we already mentioned. Uh Chan and Sabitzer, two holdings. We kind of already touched on them. I think Adiyemi on the wing, but I think Adiyemi is going to be playing a similar role to what we've seen where he's just up and down using yeah. that pace to get to cover the whole field. I'm going Brant in the middle. I think we see Royce later on in the game. Um, Sancho, I think Sancho gets the start. I liked your shout for JBG, seeing him later. And I, I don't think – I think Sancho's just his form in Champions League. He's been flying. I don't oh, yeah. think Malin takes that at all. Um, but maybe we'll see him later. And then, yeah, full crew up top. I don't, I don't have any changes. I think that's exactly what I would have gone with. I don't, I mean, yeah, like I said, Mullen has picked up some four, but I don't think he gets into this team just because of what both of our wingers bring to the table. I think they're both incredibly vital to how we approach this game against Madrid. Jaden Sancho, like you mentioned, he's been in really good form in the Champions League. He helps out immensely with our buildup play, and that has been piss poor all season, but thankfully he's made it look somewhat competent. He keeps us calm, uh, and he's, out of, he's able to play out of tremendous pressure as well and make things happen on the other side of the field. And then on the other side of that, you have Adeyemi, who, like I said, tracks back. He's basically a wing back at this point for these kind of games, at least. He's got an incredible work rate. He's been a bit smarter with, you know, God, I, I hope I don't jinx anything, but he has been smarter with not conceding dumb challenges like Chan. Uh, hopefully, you know, he can bring to the table what he has been this season. I, I don't have any other changes at the moment. Yeah. I, I'm just curious to see if we're going to shape wise, what we're going to look like, you know, I mean, Terzic in the fall, I know we approach games in a really appalling manner, like the likes of Leverkusen and Stuttgart, where we really sat back, stayed incredibly compact, just, you know, the complete opposite of what you would expect from a Borussia Dortmund side. And thankfully things changed for the better. And we, you know, came out of our shell. We're a lot more attack minded this spring but I am a little bit worried that we're going to sit further back against Madrid and just not be able to really get anything going. And it's just going to be constant pressure and waves and waves until we end up conceding. Um, but I'm, you know, again, I'm just hoping we have a little bit more heart and desire for that because we have seen a moments where we have been brave against PSG. We have been pray. I mean, I was going to go down the list, but we, we've been brave in the champions league across the board this season. So I'm, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see however way that tears ends up going for it, but either way we should be going for it. Yeah. Um, next thing I, I do want to talk about, and this is all, I guess, what we don't know how the game is going to play out. So that will have a big determining factor, but subs. Because specifically, like, I'm thinking, like, where does Roy step in? Because Roy, he has to come in at some point. And my main, I don't know if you have any predicted subs, um, but like the first one off the bat for me, like, I don't, I don't know if we've seen Brant, and I could be just misremembering. I feel like he usually subs off maybe 60 to 70th minute. I don't know if he's played a full 90 again. I could be completely wrong, but just by my memory. And I think that's the sub where Royce comes in. Cause like, obviously it's like, or I guess what, what scenario do you see Royce coming in? Is it, if we're losing, if we're winning, you let him help see things out. Um, 
just my concern is if Brant subs off and Mecha comes in for him, that's when I would be very pissed because we've seen that multiple times and I have never liked it. Um, we, we've seen it in games where we still need to create and we need to get back into games. Um, and then I see that sub happen. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? And then, but back to, I guess, overall holistic question of predicted subs. Who do you want to see? Get minutes, get get an opportunity. Um, I think JBG, like you mentioned, was a, a great shout earlier. Royce, maybe coming on for Brandt. Um, if if Sancho's cooked, then you you get Malin in there. Um, Sula, if we need to get a, a back five, back three going. But it's like, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's just a game time situation. I, I really can't predict. It just, it just depends on what Madrid's going to be like, what the scoreline's going to be like, what they're going to look like after the hour mark. I, of course, everyone here wants to see Royce play, hopefully, you know, get the winning goal, contribute in some way so we can lift the Champions League or Royce can lift the Champions League. But I'm not entirely sure he, we are going to see him. It just, again, it just depends on the moment. Um, as for Brandt, yeah, he's kind of come off at different uh, times this whole spring. I mean, he's played like an hour here and there, 70th minute, like you mentioned. He has played like a few times where he's come out like the 88th or even a 90th minute or just played a full 90 a few times later this spring. But it just kind of depends. I mean, of course, we wanted to keep rotations fresh because we had two competitions that we are you know, balancing and juggling within the same week of each other. So uh, it's just going to be a game time decision for me. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you exactly what the subs are going to look like. I mean, outside of the ones you already mentioned. I know that. I mean, that's honestly like the worst question because all subs are game time decisions. <laughs> completely depends on Carver. What I just want to know is: is Royce getting in, and in what scenario? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Because we need it. We need it. Yeah. How how is Royce supposed to score the winner if he doesn't sub on? Uh. I know it's tough. Especially because, again, Sabitzer has such great stamina. We don't have a single other number six besides Chan. I mean, you could argue somewhat Oz Chan, but there's no way he's seeing the pitch. Um, so I'm not I'm not sure really what the scenario is going to be. Uh, Score predictions? Yep. Get into... You said 1-0? Is that it? Yeah. So if we get into score predictions, I did... Earlier, I did say 1-0 because I thought it was going to be tight. But then the romantic Royce in me wants, like, a Royce brace, right? Which uh, <laughs> blows up my 1-0 score prediction. Um, I'll, I'll, stick, I'll stick with my 1-0, and I think, I think it's coming from Brant. Unless I, I could also very much see, like, hum, this is also the romantic in me, but Hummel's another match winner. Uh, but I think, I think it's going to be a, a Brant goal. To win it, one zero. One zero. That's huge. I could see Humble's getting in at the end of a, a corner or a cross. Yeah, I could also imagine full crew getting one. Uh, that'd be see nice Brand too. Getting one. My score prediction: I'm going to go with two one. I'm going to say, as much as I really don't want to see this at all, I'm going to say we concede relatively early on, and then we spend the next like 30, 40 minutes trying to claw our way back in. It's going to be really tough for us. It's going to be hard for us to get things going. But then we make some slight adjustments here and there, maybe a personnel change, and then we get two. And I'm going to go, yeah, 2 1. Borussia Dortmund are the 2024 Champions League winners yet again. What are we even going to do with ourselves? I don't know what's going to happen at that point. Jeez. I have no idea either. <laughs> I, am, I am going to it with a little bit more zen than last year when we were going into the, uh, the last day of the Bundesliga because once again, we were not the underdogs. We were just expected yeah. to do our job and win the Meisterschale, and that obviously didn't happen. But this time, just going against not just like a European giant, the European giant in the competition that they basically Do own at dominate, this point, yeah, um, yeah. And, yeah, and dominate. Uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just going into it, <laughs> just happy to be here for the most part. <laughs> I think I said it last year, but I remember going into that final match. I almost felt like there was too much hype. Like there was too much. And I would say that like coming from the Dortmund media and social channels, I was like, I feel like you're celebrating too early. Like I, it, it felt, I mean, I, I get it, I guess. Like I get playing into it and trying to be as hype and excited as possible. But I was like, I don't know. I, 
maybe it's because I was already weary and, and scared and that, but I was like, there's so much, there's so much. Um, yeah, geez. I don't know. It's going to be crazy. What, uh, I know we touched on watch parties and stuff. So your plans, I, I know your plans, but if you want to tell the people your plans and if Amsterdam there was anyone, Tavern. if I didn't shout out anyone earlier, if you got any more plugs, I didn't have any off the top of my head. Apologies to anyone in discord that might've mentioned a bar here and there. Uh, if you wanted to look at that real quick while I just shout out the Amsterdam Tavern. Yeah, of course. The Bruce St. Louis fan club is going to be there. We're going to be there very early uh, because the last few Champions Leagues I've attempted to go to, the line's been down the street like an hour before. So I'm planning on getting there pretty early. Um, other than that, yeah, anyone that's listening that doesn't have one, please feel free to either join the Discord or just look online at the link that Dortmund have for watch parties around you so you can go and experience hopefully the greatest day of being a Borussia Dortmund supporter in the last 20 plus years uh, with some friends, family, you name it, whatever you want to, whoever you want to spend your day with. But uh, yeah, either way, we'll be at the Amsterdam Tavern. You know where to find us. Uh, the only one, I mean, there's, there's, it's always hard to scroll through <laughs> messages. I know DC is going to be at across the pond. Yeah. That's usually where they're at. Um, and there, and then again, I'll put this link in the description of the episode. You don't have to join our Discord to do it, but I suggest you join our Discord anyways because it's a it's a good fun time. Um, but there is a link to from Dortmund. It's where to watch the final, so you should be able to find a group near you or a watch party near you uh, with that link. And I'm not gonna go into anything in particular. I'm just gonna say if you're going to Amsterdam, the scarf is there. So just shut up about it. The scarf is there. If you know what that means, that's all you need to know. Okay. Jesus. It's freaking there. Calm down. It was never gone. It was just covered. It's never up. gone. Chill. Just freaking chill about it. Before we go, I do want to touch on this isn't even really a women's update, but I do want to say that the the BBB Front pulled it off. They have an undefeated season in their division. They went 23 wins with just one tie, zero losses. Get this goal differential, everybody. You ready for this? 124 goals scored, six conceded. So that's a goal differential of 118, for God's sake. It just, it's it's cartoonish at this point. 21 points above second place. So it wasn't even close, of course, <laughs> given the numbers that I just referenced to you. Um, there are a few departures this summer. I'm not going to, I don't have them all listed here. I should have had them, but I couldn't, I couldn't find much inf more information than just the three that were posted. Uh, Vanessa Cool, Lisa Clayman, Clayman, I could be pronouncing that wrong. I apologize. She was the first ever captain for BBB Frauen, and a Carolyn Call as well is uh, is departing the club. So we have a few people who have been here since the beginning for BBB Frauen that are unfortunately going to be taking their leave at the end of this season. But nevertheless, undefeated season, unbelievable amount of goals, and very successful, of course, too. And we go up again. This is another year promotion, and the Frauen get that much closer to the well, women's Bundesliga, which is very, very exciting. We'll be there in no time at this rate. Are they, are they moving up to third or for, will it be fourth? Next I believe year? this will be the fourth now. Fourth. Yeah. Okay. We're in the fifth right yeah. now, to my knowledge, the Bundesliga. I, I mean, I remember when they, when they started and the seventh felt like, Oh man, it's so far away, but like to already be up to the fourth. Right. Uh, yeah. It's really exciting. It's, it's going quick. And uh, with this comes, we've talked about it before. Um, we, we always love to show some love to the BVB Frauen because they're one, they're incredible. So in any, any time you're sad about Dortmund, you just watch them and that goal differential says it all undefeated season Leverkusen who, um, but yeah, let's see Leverkusen <laughs> reach those goal differential numbers. Huh? I, th I think the real exciting thing, and we pointed out before, yes, there it's still lower division, but moving up, but the co cup competitions where they get a chance to play the higher division teams, especially now moving up yeah. again, like that, that just increases the likelihood of playing teams that are further along than us or have been around longer. I shouldn't say further along, been around and, longer in our higher in divisions. That's, that's where you get really cool head to head competitions. And it's really cool to see the women shine in that as well. Yeah. And they've also already been holding their own in these competitions against teams that have already in higher divisions. So you know, it's not like they're just crushing people that are in their division or even lower. They they're absolutely still holding their own against teams that are above them. You have this, you have a good core group of, of of girls that have been here again since the beginning too. So they're not like poaching people from like the best leagues or anything like that. There are a lot of these are like homegrown talents as well. They've got a second team now, so they're doing a lot of things right. Um, but yeah, just excited to keep 
along with the journey. Yep. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep you updated as, as more news comes. Uh, yeah, this weekend though, enjoy everybody. I don't know what else to say. Like this is yeah. it. Uh, we will be back with more episodes following the final um, celebrating. And then we will have, we'll have some episodes throughout the summer too. We'll, we'll do our normal kind of recap survey episode. We'll, I was going to say, I've been, yep. I've been cooking that up. I've, I was going to mention at the end here, that'll be out here pretty soon. I have it done already, but I just, I didn't want to release it yet because of recency bias and potentially winning the champions league. So I'm going to hold out until the day after the champions league. And then please feel free to check our socials. I'll definitely be posting it. Then it takes not even six or seven minutes. Um, but just, yeah, get your feedback on the season. You know, what are your thoughts on some of the players, some of the signings, the decisions made by the coach, things of that nature going forward too. Um, but it was fun last year, and I'm excited to see what everyone's thoughts were for this season. And I will fill it out this time, Carver, unlike wow. last year where I didn't even look at it because wow. I don't know why. But I just promoted it, and you just <laughs> threw it right back in the trash. Well, last year it <laughs> happened on the episode. Uh, it, it, it came out that I did not. That's I mean, funny. I admitted to it, but I will do it this time. Uh, but, yeah, Saturday, be here soon. Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you guys on the other side, no matter what. Yeah, I appreciate you guys listening as always, especially as we build to the Champions League final. It's really cool because the show has been growing, and, and that's all. Thanks.